Today's species spotlight is on one that has been a staple in the community for decades, but is slept on pretty much by everybody. Now, this one we're actually talking about the Amazon tree boa. They are probably the least popular of the most well-known arboreal snakes that are almost always abbreviated to the three letters. The Amazon tree boa, ATB, the emerald tree boa, ETB, and of course the green tree python, GTP. Or as I like to call them, the three trees, because I like to tongue tie myself. Now, the Amazon tree boa is a member of the genus Corallus, which also has the emerald tree boa, so kind of like cousins. They're actually the widest spread of any of the Corallus genus, spring across a good chunk of northern South America, essentially from Peru all the way over to Brazil and French Guiana and Bolivia. It's a really, really big, wide-ranging area, which is really cool and interesting because that makes them more unique than a lot of the other more popular boreal snakes. Because they spread across such a wide range, they actually have a bunch of different habitats that they've essentially managed to be able to acclimate and live in very well. And so because of this ability to live in different temperatures and habitats, that translates usually to a very hardy captive animal. Now, I said that these guys have a huge range, and I mean that. Over the course of this range, it goes from a good chunk of a lot of the Amazon basin, the northern part of the Amazon forest, all the way down to the northern part of the Gran Chaco, which is an incredibly varied part of South America as far as the habitat and climate goes. They're obviously found in rainforest because the Amazon tree boa well, it's the rainforest, you know, but they're also found in pastures, in savannas, in farmlands, basically anywhere where there is at least a little bit of mid-sized foliage to actual just sparsely, tre uh, sparsely spaced trees they have been found, including right next to and in human habitations, like near a lot of like the touristy resorts and stuff that are found down in those areas. Now, these guys are really, really unique. In addition to varying in all of these habitats, they're incredibly variable in coloration and appearance. Now, obviously, they have the general arboreal snake look. They're deceivingly long, averaging five to six and a half feet long, but an incredibly thin, narrow-bodied animal with that very large triangular head that is very unique to a lot of the boa-type animals, but very specifically a lot of the arboreal ones. But when it comes to coloration, that's where that true variability comes into. For a long time, they were always classified into two different categories, garden phase and color. Now, the garden phase generally refers to the animals that are more duller in color or at least more earthy tones, the darker animals, grays, blacks, and browns. However, there is a tremendous amount of variation and variety just in the garden phase that even includes things like the Halloween phase, which has different patches of yellow and orange in that darker color, giving it that Halloween look, which is an incredibly beautiful animal. And then the color phase often refers to animals that were yellow, orange, or red to the varying degrees and patterns. And even then, those are incredibly beautiful and can be very bright animals just in and of themselves. But now, thanks to captive breeding programs and selective breeding, we have incredibly bright yellows and oranges and reds and tigers and caligos and even true melanistic animals and a whole bunch of variety in between even intermixing them with incredibly bright spots of color in some of the darker garden phases. It's really, really beautiful. Now, in the wild, these guys were often found in all of those habitats like we talked about, but they're one of the true nocturnal animals to where a lot of the times if you were to go out into a jungle hike in the middle of the night in Peru or Bolivia or Brazil, you always remember to look out for both rocks, but you will often find them at varying degrees of varying heights from about waist level height of different like bushes and hedges and things like that. Probably not a hedge in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, Jay-Z up into different parts of the tree canopy, hanging down, looped up, and then hanging down, looking to grab birds, bats, small mammals, and even a few reptiles. But they're mostly mammalian and bird is their prey base. Now, these guys are very, very unique. There is something that is pretty common to a lot of nocturnal animals that when you shine a light across them at night, you will actually get eye shine or light reflected back from the animal's eyelids. And there is an actual membrane that is meant to reflect light in the actual animal's eyes that allows them to have better night vision. And very, 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 very few reptiles have that. 
alligators and crocodiles, some frogs, even tarantulas do have those eye shines, but almost no snakes have that. But a lot of the members of the Corallus genus, including the Amazon tree boa, do have that membrane, which I'm going to mispronounce because I've already done it four times during this recording, so I'm just gonna put it right here. That is that reflective membrane the nocturnal animals that including the Amazon tree boa have that give it that eye shine. So again, if you went out herping in the middle of the Peruvian rainforest and you're sitting there doing eye shines, in addition to catching maybe sleeping monkeys that you're waking up or bats or other things like that, you may actually get Amazon tree boas and that's a really good way to go herping for an animal like that. Really, really cool, right? Now, in captivity, we've talked about them being fairly hardy, right? Considering their varying degrees of habitat, being able to survive in all these different areas, they have a reputation for being incredibly cantankerous and defensive. That is something that's shared with a lot of the arboreal species of snakes. When you live in the trees, your main diet is something usually that is moving very fast. So you have to be quick to grab it and you have to be left alone. Like all snakes, their entire way of interacting with the world is their face. So that's why typically you see a lot of them having incredibly large teeth for them to be able to grab that prey item and not let go. But they're also typically very quick to strike versus trying to get away. Now, that I'm not going to say that one of these species is any more docile or more handleable or okay with handling than the other. They're all individualistic. I've worked with animals with green trees that I've been able to literally pick up off of a perch just coiled up in a little ball in my hand versus my own biak or biak, however you want to pronounce it, that we've now gotten to the point where I can interact at the bottom of his cage. But if I'm trying to mess with him, he's not having it. But there is something that is very common with a lot of the arboreal keepers that makes it very handy, very handy to be able to work with them, at least as far as basic tank maintenance goes and moving things around. And that is actually removable perches. There are different things you can get from like the little closet bar, little things that you can adhere to the sides of your enclosure, be it with silicone for glass or actually drilling it if you have PVC or wood or something. You can actually take the perch and pick it up snake in tow and then using something like maybe a physical bear or something if you're worried about a bite or anything like that to actually be able to move and work with that so that way the animal can essentially figure out that whenever you're going in there a he's already they have already discerned that it's not always going to be food it's going to be you and then b that you're never going to invade yes it's personal space but you may not ever actually have to touch it this is one of the species of reptiles snakes specifically because that's what usually i'm talking about that is more of a display species now, when we actually comes time to that display animal, the Amazon tree boa, as we talked about, is deceptively long. The emeralds can get about that long, a little bit heavier body, green trees a little bit shorter, but they don't typically stay in one cute little ball or like little coil loop like the green trees or the emeralds. They have a tendency to actually spread out an incredibly long amount and kind of haphazardly, lazily loop their coils across a very long one. So in addition to obviously needing height with varying different spots for them to sit there and thermoregulate or decide where they want to perch, you actually, for an Amazon tree boa, need to have an enclosure that is a little bit longer. So we're talking probably a minimum three feet and probably should be longer, three feet and then probably two feet for an adult female because like with most boas, the females are larger, something like that. The other thing is obviously you have to deal with like the whole humidity and temperature thing. A lot of times people have a very difficult time when they're very first getting started figuring out ambient humidity and a bunch of height. It's pretty easy to nail humidity when you're working with something like a tub or even a shorter enclosure. With a whole lot of height, it's hard to get that good temperature gradient and humidity gradient in there. The thing about the Amazon tree boa that might make this a little bit easier is they are one of the few arboreal species that at least in captivity seems to come down to the ground more often, even in being kept in conditions that are adequate for them. So they typically like cooler temps, but they have a good adequate basking spot, day night cycle, plenty of humidity and the ability to move around. They will still oftentimes go down to the ground. They don't usually soak, but a lot of times they will kind of haphazardly bury if you give them a nice good deep layer of substrate, typically that also helps with that whole ambient humidity thing, where they'll spend a lot of time on the ground. So maybe providing them a few terrestrial on the ground hides to allow them to, especially during the times of shedding when they seem to do it more often, 
is a good idea for their husbandry. And so because of this, a lot of the times you will have people who, if they're actually interested in keeping an arboreal species, have an easiest time with the Amazon tree boa just because it's general captive behavior. And I could not find any information about whether or not they do this in the wild or not. Typically, it's always they're just found at waist height or above. And that's really the only information that I've ever seen, even with iNaturalist being documented, actual footages and photos of footages of actual photos of them being seen in the wild, not being messed with just click, this is where I found it in this condition. They're almost always up in the trees, but in captivity, they do come to the ground more often. So, Shadaisy may be a little bit easier for you. Now, as kind of recapping all of this again, as usual, they aren't always as popular as the emeralds and the green tree pythons. Oftentimes they are wild caught and just like with the green trees and the emeralds, you will see that reflected in their price. Typically we're looking at under $100 for just like a regular garden or basic color phase. And then for an actual captive bred, even just a captain bred, like a captive bred yellow is significantly much more. Not even talking about like the high red calico tigers that can be probably more than $1,000. It's the same with green tree pythons of the designers and the special localities and the emeralds between the wild cotton captive born like Amazon basins and northern. So that thing that we'll get into an emerald tree bull at some point down the road. So very, very unique animal, usually not as popular again. However, because of the variability of that in just kind of their more natural state, yes, we know that a lot of the green tree pythons have done a whole lot more designer breeding and we're getting like the super high melanistic animals and like that. The Amazon tree boa at its base is just probably a much more variable animal that can be a whole lot more fun. And if you're looking for something you can have a very large vivarium, and then even though this is an animal that is typically nocturnal, just like the other arboreal python and, and emerald tree boa, an animal that you might actually see spread out a lot more other than just kind of dangling down that you see with the other ones that can be incredibly varied in color and in price. And you can have a really cool centerpiece of an animal in your whatever room you happen to decide to put it into. Not necessarily one that you're ever going to be able to handle with. Again, not saying that you never will or no animal won't ever let you, but this is definitely one that can be a very rewarding pet, typically on the auspices of the house of display. Hope everyone enjoyed today's video. I always have a whole lot of fun. As always, this is another one because this is take like four of this video and I forgot to mention it. This animal was provided again by Braden Exotics and I will be sure to mention that and sprinkle it out throughout the rest of the video that now recapping again, you guys are gonna see. So thank you again, Braden Exotics, for letting me be able to actually use your absolutely amazing animals that did come in as essentially an adoptive rescue for you guys. It seems to be doing very well. He came right off. Um, with that hook and he came out pretty easily with that time so just like as always Braden Exotics is doing a very good job working with your animals thank you again so much hope again thank you all so much for watching this video if you can please like subscribe hit the bell notification i know i'm really bad about saying that in the middle of the video but it always throws me off so that's always here at the end if you can hit the bell notification any questions comments concerns let me down below follow me on the other you know social media blah 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 please check out the entire playlist of the species spotlights we have a few more animals coming from Brain Exotics and we're looking into getting uh, into a bunch of other really cool animals further down the road. If you have any other ideas for videos, please let me know. You can always email me. That's also in the description of every single video. Hope you're having a great day and we will check you next time.